We are going to look at trigonometry. Uh, this unit of trigonometry really is based on right triangle ratios. So the first thing that we need to make sure we understand is two kind of different ways to describe the shape of a right triangle. It can be described with either one, an angle. So for example, I could say we have a 40 degree right triangle. Or I can describe the right triangle as a ratio. And I can say, for example, the one side compared to the other side is in a ratio of 1 to 2. Okay, and we can draw a little slope triangle when we describe that triangle. And we can recognize the shape of that triangle based on that ratio, just as we might describe the shape of a triangle with an angle. But they're two different things. They're very different things. So describing something with an angle which is a measurement of this angle versus describing that same shape with a ratio or measuring the lengths of sides. So we have in the past used ratios and we're just gonna start with the ratios, but what we're gonna do a little bit differently now is we're gonna just make sure we consistently label the sides the same. Okay, so when we talk about certain sides of a right triangle, we're always going to be talking about the same side so that we're, there's no confusion on that. So this is what trig is all about then, is that we're just going to make sure that we label the sides the, in a specific way. And what we're going to do is label the sides as adjacent to some angle. For example, here, if we talk about angle A, the angle adjacent or next to angle A is going to be this side here. If I talk about a, the, another angle, if I make it relative to angle B, the adjacent side will be this side. So these are the same two triangles, but this angle B has a different adjacent side than the angle A, which has this adjacent side. So we have the adjacent side of that angle. We have the opposite side to the angle. So if I, again, look at re relative to angle A, this side over here is the opposite side. Okay, whereas in this case, that same side was adjacent side to B. And if we talk about angle B, and we talk about the opposite side to angle B, again, we're talking about this side here. So when we talk about opposite of angle B, we're talking about this side specifically, which is, this, we could also name, in fact, and just to be clear, we can name that two different ways. We can also call that same side adjacent to angle A. So it all depends. We have to make sure that we describe which angle we're making reference to. And then the third side is the hypotenuse, which is easy because the hypotenuse will always end up being the longest side regardless of the angle that we're talking about. So when we talk about the hypotenuse of angle A, it's this one, and hypotenuse of angle B is the same side. So that's important that we are able to name these sides. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're just going to stick with describing these shapes with ratios. Okay, so we're just going to use the side length and we're not going to worry about the angles for now. And we're going to describe the ratio shapes as fractions and decimals. And then we're going to use these same ratios to solve for these unknown sides of the triangle. So I'm going to, we're not going to worry too much about the names for this example. We'll kind of start talking about the names a little bit more formally. But if we were to talk about the side six here, it would be opposite of angle A, or we could also describe it as adjacent to angle B. And the side 8 here would be adjacent to angle A, and it would be opposite to angle B, and then the 10 is a hypotenuse for both angles. So I want to find the unknown. I've been given a right triangle here. All the sides have been solved for. I just want to figure out what these other sides of these other two triangles look like. So I'm going to maybe label this side, uh, we'll call that side X. We'll call that side Y. And if I take a look at these two triangles, I can see that side 4 here is adjacent to side A. Side 8 is adjacent to side A. Or we could say opposite to side B, opposite side B. So these two sides actually relate to each other. So I'm going to write a proportion. And this is what we call a scale proportion because it's going to be the the, num the scale factor which goes between these two numbers. So I'm going to do small to large, and I know that there is a small to large comparison for the other sides. So then I need to look for these other sides. So if I look at this side here, side 6, it's opposite angle A. Opposite angle A is going to be this side here, X. 
So I'm going to compare those two sides. And I did small to large here. So I'm going to do the same comparison in the same direction. These are ratios and proportions. So proportions have direction. So I'm going to do it as small to large. Okay, so that's the ratio that I have here. And this is, you can see the scale factor is, a sc is when I divide those two numbers, I get one half. And then the scale factor must be one half. So I times by one half here. That means I divide by one half going this way, or I can, oops, so that did the wrong way around. That's going to be times by two. So I'm going to divide by two going in the opposite direction. Okay, so X looks like it's going to be equal to three. Okay, we may choose to cross multiply this. Okay, again, this makes, as long as we understand the proportional, proportionality of the multiplying factor involved here, you know, we can solve this by doing four times six divided by eight equals X. And we get 12, 24 divided by eight is equal to three, which we solved before, okay? So we can see that our scale factor of two shows up between the two triangles in this multiplier going up and down. So I'm gonna solve 